BBC Radio Stoke, 14 minutes to eight. Should we talk mining now? I think um, so. Such a tradition of, so a huge part of the, the uh, history of the area, Stoke-on-Trent in Staffordshire. And all the mines now closed, of course, but at one time thousands of men spent their working day down the pits. Yes, well, did you ever work at Chatterley Whitfield, Common? I've been down there when I was at school, I went down on a school trip. <laughs> they the they put you down there? <laughs> yeah, I thought I that sort of thing was outlawed. <laughs> <laughs> no, they used to, it used to be a museum in the 90s. Uh, I know the pit closed in the mid-70s. It was a museum in the 90s, but sadly that was closed as well. But if you did ever work at Chatterley Whitfield, one man's after your memories for a very special DVD that's being created this year. Yeah, it's Jeff Owen and he's here this morning. Morning, Jeff. Morning. So morning. I'm, I'm taking us back for a lot of history there. We're just saying yeah, so Yeah, well, it's, it's an important part of Stoke-on-Trent. You know, without the coal mining industry, there'd be probably no pottery industry no steelworks, no canals, the coal power, the canals, yeah, the of trains. because everything was so built to, to serve that so industry. Re- yeah. really need to remember the, the coal miners of not just Stoke-on-Trent, the whole country, because there's no working pits left. Mm. Were you um, a miner yourself, Jeff? Yeah, I, I left school. Um, I, my dad said, you're never going to go down the pit. I didn't find out till later why you said that but my first job was down the pit it was quite easy for me because my best mate's dad John Belcher was actually the manager of Silverdale so I spent my first pit was down at Silverdale so that was uh, what's it like with it going down for the very first time can you remember uh the first time was a little bit daunting yeah I can uh, imagine because then the the trading pit was Wolstanton and that was uh, the deepest shaft in Europe. So it's basically going down a mile. And the way I, I, I'm a, a mine to a guide at Apedale Colliery now. And when we take the kids down, we tell them about going down the shaft to get to work. And in those days, we used to get paid for going down that lift, that cage. We drop a mile before we start walking to work underground. And now, for those sort of rides, you have to pay to go to Alton Towers. Yes, yes. So uh, it, it just, it, it's, it's, it's good. Once you get down there, it's, it's, it's okay. well worth getting, yeah, yeah. getting down. It's, it's good. The thing is, I remember when Chatterley Whitfield was a museum and we actually did go down in the, in the, the lift. Yeah. And then we all had our light hats on with the lights. And then the guide said, turn off your lights. And we all stood there. And it's, it's so black that I don't even think my no eyes could ever get used to that. Yeah. It's pitch I, I, black, isn't it? I say that, that's literally, that's one of the things we do when we do the mind tour guides. It's uh, get the kids, so, right, close your eyes on the surface. What can you see? Oh, it's dark. I mm-hmm. said, right, remember that vision now. Yeah. Then when we're down the mine, and we still do it, turn the light off, and, whoo, and yeah, I oh say it's, it's an experience to see proper darkness. And you want all these experiences, the, the proper experiences. You, you want to get this sorted by the end of the year as well. So well, quite yeah, no we, pressure. The, well, this is uh, this is based Chatterley Whitfield. The, there's lots of. Uh, talk of, of people who've worked down the pits uh, but now we're trying to get Chatterley Whitfield back on the map because it was one of the biggest pits not just in Stoke-on-Trent in the whole country it's uh, an ancient scheduled monument so it's the same as um, Stonehenge and places like that and at the moment it's just in limbo once the museum closed then the money wasn't available to keep it going So now we want to try and regenerate it because at one point there was over 4,000 people working at Chatterley Whitfield and it's got the potential to get people there again and be another big part of uh, Stoke-on-Trent. It's not just the heritage, it's the future that Mm. we can work on. And with uh, what we're trying to do now is to get a, a, a film and a book all about Chatterley Whitfield, bring all the stories together and we've just done it at the moment just gone on to uh, Facebook and using social media which wasn't available 10 years ago because that's made a huge yeah, difference really yeah. so we've got a lot of people stories coming in from that way but now we've got to go on the radio because there's been lots of people listening to the radio who haven't got access to the internet yeah have you um, got any other any stories so far is there one yeah that kind of well, well in fact this morning I, I got got up quite early because I live down south now and I checked my emails and I just had this, I printed it off. And this is the story from somebody who responded to the a Facebook Live we did. And she 
sent sent me a full story of a Bevan boy. This was a oh, granddad wow. or dad. Sorry, Sue Berry. I'd like to thank you for this. I haven't had a chance to read through it all, but that's a wow, actual that. story of a, a granddad or a dad when he went as a Bevan boy working down Chatley Whitfield. And there's some great lines. I've just highlighted a few lines in there, and it was the camaraderie, and, and that's what I found when I was down the pit. And another good story that came in the other day, I was talking about an 11-year-old working down the pit, because in the 1800s, and we talk about this at Apedale, that in the 1800s, five-year-olds and ladies used to work down the pit until 1842, and they said, no, no, no ch child or lady down the pit, and then it went to 10-year-olds. Wow. And so now we've actually had a good story of somebody's granddad, local. He worked at Chatterley Whitfield as an 11-year-old and got buried alive for two days. They managed to pull him out because he's a thin and spindly young lad. Carried on down there for till he was 14. And then it was coming up to the, the Second World War. So then he went into the army for a bit more excitement. Thought it would be safer than working down the pit. And then he went into the army and the para, the para regiment that first started, he went straight into that. He did D-Day, he did uh, Battle of the Bulge and some big campaigns, came back and then he was back in Stoke and he was getting bored. He'd had the excitement of jumping out of aeroplanes and then he saw two men up a chimney. I said, oh, that looks exciting. And this was on the way back to join the, the army again. He said, oh, come up, have a look. And so he went up that chimney, 300 foot chimney in Stoke. And he th this is giving me that excitement back again. And that man was actually Sam Rafferty. And I think a lot of people in Stoke have heard of Rafferty's, the steeplejacks. That's how he got started. And he was Rafferty. And that wow. was Sam Rafferty. So oh. there's a brilliant story there. And we didn't know about that until we started. So there'll be lots of other stories out there from people who worked at Chatley Whitfield. And if you've got any photographs or cine film <laughs> going back, then I'll say just get in touch. And how do the people get in touch? Well... It, if uh, you've got access to the internet, we've just done a, a temporary website, and that's www.cw, for Chatterley Whitfield, dot our DVD, O U R DVD dot co dot UK. Brilliant. And if you haven't got the internet, then can I give my phone number? Well, well, give it to give us it here. To, yeah. and we, and we, say, and if you, you contact touch. the station, they'll give you my we'll, number, we'll that on. and then Brilliant. we can have a chat. And let's say, let's get Chatterley Great. Whitfield back on the map. Back on the map. And you can always become a friend of Chatterley Whitfield, it costs five pound a year, but we look for people who want to help us to regenerate the site, people from any trade, and we want to get the young people involved. Brilliant. And keep those oh, memories coming. Great. Fantastic. Lovely. Well, hopefully, Thanks, uh, we'll look forward to seeing the DVD. Thank Wonderful. you very much indeed. Oh, so we've got to the Jeff's details here, and uh, we'll, we'll pop that website address on as well. Uh, five to eight, we're going to see how the weather is doing, Mel.